Hello everyone, um, it's been a while since you last saw me, um, you know, we've had the lovely Sandra presenting a lot of the videos, but for this particular update, I actually wanted to uh, just talk a bit about it and, you know, let us know, let you guys know what you've been working on. And, um, you know, I've recently moved towards a more uh, operational role, uh, which is the, the chief operating officer role. So I've been doing a lot of that and making sure that, you know, our development and marketing and everything's on track. So uh, there's actually quite a lot of things to update. But in particular, I wanted to talk a bit about MDP, which, you know, we have been trying to implement for quite a while now. So as you know, you know, we, re we funded a, a revision of the original MDP to address certain concerns uh, and security problems with the original MDP. And that resulted in the paper published in January this year called MTP version 1.2. And it was a very interesting paper. It also talks about how it compares to other algorithms like uh, Ethereum, the F hash, uh, and you know Cuckoo Cycle. But uh, I just wanted to sort of like um, let you know that you know with the release of French Drop, our latest thirteen point five dot seven, uh, our resources are now deployed in getting MTP out as soon as we can. And the work, the re-implementation work of our old code uh, of MTV version 1 is not too difficult. Uh, it requires porting of our old MTP code from the older core because it was built for zero, Bitcoin core 0 0.8. We need to bring it back up to 0.13. And we also need to do certain changes to reflect the new academic paper of, uh, uh, for MTP version 1.2, so certain changes in the algorithm to make it a lot more, a uh, lot more resilient. And uh, it's actually, you know, that work was, uh, you know, we partially funded the academic paper, and we even had a bounty uh, of, you know, qu quite a lot of money to that greatly existed in finding a lot of vulnerabilities. So, with special thanks to Zorinak, which is a Mark Pavan, and also Fabian Kohel and his team uh, for submitting those really valuable entries. Now, although the, the work for recoding isn't too difficult and probably can be completed in about a month or less, the more difficult part is designing the test to make sure it works as intended and we really want to come up with a good release for it. We also want to make sure we have some miners out for public use. Uh, and as such, we have a very a sufficiently long testing phase. Uh, we'll definitely launch it and test that. We'll definitely you know, launch the public miners. And this will also allow miner developers and pool devs to work on it. Uh, we did originally uh, think about coming up with a pool software ourselves but it proved to be not our expertise and you know we talked to a few uh, people and even like minor developers and I said look you know it's not it's not our duty to come up with the pool software uh, and by making sure that um, having the pool operators coded making make sure that you know only those that really have the chops to maintain a pool would be having an MTP pool. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we, we there's some truth to that, but we also want to have, you know, a good number of pools as well. So when time is right, we'll probably launch another bounty to make sure that uh, the code for the pool, for the MTP pool is open source. So we have a substantial bounty for that, which we'll announce later. And, you know, right now, you know, of course our price, you know, I think the general market has been quite bearish and it's actually the best time to develop and take our times to get things right, uh, you know, rather than always chasing the next release. And, but actually today, the main thing I want to talk about is to take the opportunity to talk about an often asked question, uh, which is why Zcoin is focusing on proof of work and not proof of stake. And, you know, there are other competitors uh, that use Zerocoin with a proof of stake. And, you know, why do we still use proof of work? You know, what are the benefits of having proof of work? 
So, you know, a bit of like a bit of education for those of you who may not be familiar is um, so proof of work means I need to do work that consumes computational power and electricity before I can add a block to the blockchain. So therefore, I solve a puzzle and when I am the first to solve the puzzle, I am allowed to have my group of transactions form the block of the, the next block of the blockchain. This means that the blockchain is actually secured by the computational power backing the block. Now, you know, there are many people that actually argue that this ties the value of a coin to some real world value because there's electricity costs and hardware costs that you're putting into the mining of this coin. Uh, so it maybe you know, establishes a base value of the coin. Now, proof of stake uh, is works quite differently. Is that instead of having to do work, uh, someone just needs to own a certain number of coins and stake them. And depending on the proportion of coins you own, you have a chance to mine a block, or in this case, they usually call forging a block. And the larger of number of coins I all I own, uh, you know, the more often I will get to forge a new block. And the primary benefit of proof of stake is that because it doesn't require any work, it is much more energy efficient since it doesn't really require any work which consumes a lot of electricity. But note that this actually means that to secure the blockchain, you need to have, you know, the coin, right? So let's say if uh, in a proof of stake coin, I need to own the coin to secure the coin. While in a proof of work system, I don't necessarily need to own the coin. I can just, you know, dedicate my hardware to it. Uh, and you know, there's some arguments uh, for and against that. But let's let's look into other benefits of proof of stake, which a lot of people have been talking about. So another benefit is the it's a lot simpler to implement sharding solutions. Uh, because what sharding does, it breaks up the work into little pieces and validators are chosen and then assign the shard. That means, you know, uh, breaking up the work and assigning it to people. With proof of work, it's a lot harder since you cannot stop miners from applying work to any given shard. But of course, there are some solutions for this, uh, you know, something called puzzle towers, but it's a lot more complex. So it's a lot easier to implement in a proof of stake system. So I'm not going to cover in detail, of course, you know, the, the debate of security between proof of works versus proof of stake is highly technical, uh, but it can be summarized that in general, proof of work is a much more proven way to secure a blockchain compared to proof of stake. You know, there's very little controversy about the security of proof of work. It's been well analyzed, it's been, you know, used in Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency uh, that exists. Uh, and there's actually quite a bit of controversy and academic debate as to how secure proof of stake really is because, well, there's no, you know, some argue there's no real world value, but the the part, the, the question that always comes up again is the, called the nothing at stake problem. It's a bit too long to, to talk about here, but if you're really interested, you can Google up the nothing at stake problem and you can read how systems such as Casper and Ethereum and other systems like delegated proof of stake try to solve it. And none of them are perfect. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of controversy over that. But, you know, it doesn't mean that proof of stake is broken or anything like that. It's just that, well, you know, there's, there's a bit of a question mark. It's not just yet proven. So, you know, despite so all these benefits of proof of stake, you know, sharding, you know, low electricity costs. So why is Zcoin still so focused on proof of work? A lot of people, you know, have seen proof of work as antiquated antiquated and and why are you using that i think that's a really wrong way to oppose it because you know i guess everyone's buying into the whole um you know i think ethereum uh, philosophy that proof of stake is better now first of all you have to think that zcoin is primarily a cryptocurrency right we don't aim to be a utility talk token. We don't aim to be a smart contract platform. I mean, we, we may develop this in the future. We're not ruling it out. But primarily, and, you know, we feel that 
Z coin sh should be used as a currency. And you know, a most the most important element of a currency that is it needs to be accepted, right? You know, like if it's not accepted, it doesn't function as a currency. You know, like uh, and to get acceptance, you need a wide distribution of people. And proof of work really excels at this by allowing a great number of people to get your hands into your coin or your economy. Now, you know, I mean, you know, some, some other comp competing projects have criticized, oh, you know, Zcoin has a very high inflation. But look, first of all, we are using Bitcoin's release schedule, which has worked well for it, right? And, and secondly, it is more important for the long term of a success of a currency to have a reasonably high inflation in the first few years that make sure that the coins gets into as many people's hands during the initial years of the coin. Because, you know, um, you, need, you need a big economy, you need an ecosystem to actually uh, to have a functional currency. And it's pointless to have a highly restricted inflation that prevents newcomers from joining your currency because, you know, like a pure proof of stake system, you know, you're going to restrict them and you, they have to buy from existing holders of the coin. So, and they may, and these existing holders of the coin may be unwilling to sell because they are re rewarded for holding because they're getting, they're getting, um, you know, sort of transaction fees and, and rewards for staking the coins. And, you know, that's why you take a look, pro, pure proof of stake coins tend to be fully pre-allocated from the beginning, meaning there's usually an ICO or an airdrop of some sort to distribute the coins since there's no creation of new coins. Uh, you know, the entire supply is available from the genesis. And, uh, you know, so the stakers just earn transaction fees. And this is why some projects uh, have a proof of work phase to start with to distribute the coins and later on then switch to a proof of stake phase. But if you take a look at most coins, uh, the proof of work phases don't tend to last very long. You know, sometimes it's only a few months. and. You know, ask yourself, uh, is that really sufficient? Because, you know, when you're launching a new coin, not many people have heard of you and you're going to have that proof of work phase in that low publicity period. And then only, <laughs> you know, only later when you become a bit more famous, uh, then, you know, you, you, you switch to a proof of stake system. So, you know, we feel that it's not, not an ideal way of, of distributing coins. And I guess Ethereum is a notable exception where it's a relatively long proof of work phase. Now, others have gone through the hybrid route because they realized that, look, you know, you can't do away with proof of work. You need that distribution. And they do a hybrid route of combining proof of work and proof of stake together. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you know, Peercoin was the first that kind of um, sort of pioneered that. Uh, now, I think one of the major issues is that proof of stake results in the rich getting richer. Since the more you own, the more likely you are to forge a new block and get the transaction fees. And you know, if you have a master note system on top of that, or like a Z note system, it's a double recipe of people hoarding coins, which it's really unhealthy for a successful currency in the long term. I mean, it may use short-term gains due to the limited supply, but it's not really good for adoption. And that's why, because we have Z nodes, you know, which is an important component, you know, scalability and also having a sort of um, price stability. But at the same time, there has to be a counterbalance, and we feel that proof of work does offer that counterbalance. There's a buying and there's a selling. There's a good, healthy economy. And this is also why MTP uh, is really important. I mean, many of the criticisms of proof of work stem from the centralization of miners or Bitcoin miners in particular, because, uh, you know, in, with Bitcoin, there's a, a very few, a select number of manufacturers that can make these specialized ASIC machines. And as a result, they can control the you know, who, who owns the, the, the machines and kind of encourages the creation of large mining pools which can gain from economies of scale. 
Now, MTP is a bit different because if you can't create specialized miners for it, then, you know, most people should be able to use the existing hardware, you know, and most people have a computer in their home, you know, hopefully some have GPUs, but even without them, you can use your existing hardware to get some Zcoin to participate in the Zcoin economy. And this is very much like the early days of Bitcoin in the sense that anyone can dedicate their, you know, computing resources and have a chance, a decent chance to get some uh, new coins. And um, yeah, so, you know, I think this is really a point that people don't think about. They're always thinking about the short term about you know oh limited supply we must have like you know constrain the supply so that the price goes up but at the same time you, you know if you're gonna look like five years down the line you really need to get your coin distributed as many people as possible and create that community now it's not so ideal you know we we know that lyra 2z is uh well, we don't know. There's some evidence uh, that it might be mined by botnets. Uh, you know, we haven't actually proved that. It might actually just be uh, very large uh, farms. But at the end of the day, you know, our hope is that MTP will remove this, uh, and you know, hopefully, maybe even the next, the first few weeks of MTP, maybe just solo mining. So, yeah, you know, so of course we've talked about proof of stake and proof of work and, you know, some may ask, well, you know, there are other variants of proof of stake, you know, uh, I think the most popular being the, uh, what do you call it, delegated proof of stake. And these are proof of stake variants uh, where, you know, so in delegated proof of stakes, users vote for a selected number of validators. So instead of everybody having able to stake coins, only the selected validators can uh, validate blocks. Uh, so the, one of the benefits of this is that because there's a smaller number, um, you know, you can have quite a high performance network, but it's a lot less it's a, it's a lot less decentralized. So, you know, you're concentrating validation in a smaller number of hands and it's also less resilient because and it's also easier to censor because, you know, instead of everybody, you know, like for example, in BitShares, I believe they only have like 101 validators. So it's a lot smaller number of people. It also suffers from a problem where if there's not enough active voters because you need to vote these validators in and if most users don't care to vote, they're like, yeah, what, what's the point I vote? The network can be actually controlled by large stakeholders who vote for themselves, which is, which is a kind of centralization in itself. Uh, it's not really good. Uh, you know, there's also a lot of talk about the new proof of stake mechanism in Cardano called, oh, I have no idea how to pronounce this, Oro, Oroboros. And if you take a look at it, it's actually just a modified version of delegated proof of stake. And as far as I can tell, suffers from the same issues. Uh, this is not to say that proof of stake is not a viable mechanism. And there are some instances where high response time, such as in a platform like uh, Steemit, Steam it, requires a proof of stake type of system to function. But however, as a currency, you know, we believe that proof of work is a good way to get widespread adoption with strong security, as long as the underlying mining algorithm makes it hard to centralize. That's why we really feel that MTP is going to be a game changer. So yeah, that's all I have to say today. And, and you know, thanks for watching. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And, you know, maybe in the next video Sandra will come back and <laughs> I know there's been some comments in the YouTube channel that saying oh you know from now on Sandra should be doing all the videos yeah we'll see <laughs> I really like uh, her doing it as well but but as for this uh, you know depending on the response uh, you know if anyone wants me to cover how MTP compares to existing algorithms such as Equihash F hash or kryptonite. I'll make an, another video of that. So if you really want to see that, just leave a comment uh, in the comments below. So uh, good night, everyone. And you know, um, just want to say I've been really busy as well. On top of the the Z coin stuff, is that yeah, my wedding is about in in a, in a week plus. So I'm busy really organizing that. So yeah, just bear with me. Thanks so much, then. Take care.